Hey, what's up? I'm Brent from August Burns Red, and we're here to talk about some of my gear. This right here is called the Kemper Amp. It's a fairly new item. Um, probably went on sale in the beginning of last year towards the start of this year. Um, I used to play a PV5150 and technically I still do. What the Kemper Amp does is it takes an exact copy of the sound of, of any amp. Um, you run your guitar head into a cab through a microphone, plug the microphone into this, and then when you and then you play, it copies the sound and you can store I need thousands of amps in here, so I, I probably have a couple hundred different amps inside of here. Um, you can go on a forum and download other people's amps that they've uh, profiled, that's what they call it, and uh, you can use them and it sounds pretty much 100% accurate. Um, and that's why I bought this when we fly overseas a lot. Um, not so much Europe, but when, once you hit Southeast Asia and places like that, um, you can't always get a PB5150. Sometimes you end up with a Mesa amp, which you really don't feel like playing because that's not your sound. Um, and a lot of times that sucks. So I decided on the Kemper amp and I contacted Kemper and they were nice enough to uh, let me have two of these guys. And I have one and then we use another one on the third guitar about halfway through the set just for one song. And it's made life so much easier. I don't know if you can see this, but this is what the two amps travel in. Um, it weighs less than 40 pounds. Uh, it can fly anywhere in the world for free. You don't have to pay for overweight baggage with it. Um, it's, it's an amazing little amp and it has all my effects stored inside of it and it's just run by a MIDI controller which I have out front and then I also run it through an electric harmonics uh, power amp and into a uh, Mesa guitar cap. I'm going to tell you about my guitar a little bit. Uh, this is an Ibanez uh, FR Prestige model. Um, comes in two colors, black or red. Uh, obviously this is the black one. I use EMG pickups, EMG 81 and 85. Um, not much other than that. I mean, my gauge strings are 52 to 10, and we use Sennheiser Wireless. And I mean, that's pretty much it. The guitar plays awesome. It has a super thin neck. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's just a great, great guitar for the style of music we play. It's awesome. Hey guys, my name is JB Brubaker. I play guitar for August Burns Red, and I'm here to give you a walkthrough of my guitar rig. My guitar is an RGA 121 by Ibanez. Um, all the guitars I play are Ibanez, and this is my main guitar. Um, I've been playing this one since. I believe I started playing it in 2009, and I I love it. Um, it has a custom green paint job, which is kind of like my staple thing now. Um, and then I have these two stripes to match my white EMG pickups. Um, now, these stripes are not actually painted on. Uh, it's just electrical tape. So, but it looks good from stage. We'll just keep that our little secret. Um, and this is my favorite baseball team. I just have that on the back for for fun. It's a prestige neck, which uh, if you know anything about Ibanez guitars, their prestige necks are some of the nicest necks they make and they're super thin and really easy to shred on. Um, I, I prefer skinny necks and I've been playing really skinny necks for a long time now. So when I pick up like, a, I don't know, like a Gibson or something, I'm like, wow, this neck is so thick. I, I don't even know how people play on it, but uh, I, I like my neck really skinny. Um, and then my the tuners here are Spurzel locking tuners, which is not that exciting, but they're they're good. You don't have to wind the strings around when you when you restring. And then I have a little 
pick holder, which is key if you drop a pick, <laughs> which I do from time to time. And then I'm a, I'm a fixed bridge guy. I don't like, you know, the whammy bar and the floating trims. I like it fixed, um, specifically because when you're running around on stage and jumping up and down and stuff, you tend to, especially if you're like palm muting, playing like a heavy rhythm, it's easy to like push down on a, on a floating tremolo. And then that makes your sound obviously go like, woo, woo, and you, you know, you don't want that. So since I try to run around and, and really get into it, I need a fixed bridge. And this, this one specifically is called the Gibraltar Bridge. And I think these are kind of hard to find now. I don't, I don't think Ibanez makes those um, anymore, unfortunately, because I really like that bridge. Um, for my amps, I play PV amps, and uh, specifically on this tour, I'm using the PV6505+. Plus. Um, this is the one I'm playing tonight. This one's just here in the event that something goes horribly wrong with this one, which I really hope doesn't happen, but, you know, it's good to have a backup ready. Um, I started playing PV5150s when August Burns Red first started, you know, doing shows and touring and stuff, and that was, that was my amp of choice for years. Um, however, as our band progressed, we started to write in more clean sections into our songs. And unfortunately, the PV5150 and 6505 amps don't have the nicest clean channel. Um, so on this, on this album cycle, actually, is the first time I've, I've made the switch to the 6505+. Plus. Um, it's voiced a little bit differently. The, the lead channels sound a little different, but the... Uh, the lead channel on the 6505 Plus still has a lot of gain, and it's, it's a really ballsy channel. So I, I don't have a problem with, with the slight tone difference between the 6505 and the 6505 Plus in the lead channel. But the clean channel on this one blows the 6505 out of the water. It's, it's way better. And it has a separate EQ for the clean channel right here, which is really helpful as well. Um, it's just a lot easier to dial in and get like a nice chimey clean tone with this amp than it is with your standard 6505 or 5150 amp. My guitar cabinet is a Mesa Boogie Recto cab. I've been playing these since I started touring. Um, these are the best cabs for the sound that, that I have and uh, I've tried other cabs out and Especially when doing international touring, sometimes you get stuck with a different cabinet, like a Marshall or I don't know, something you're not used to. And I'm, I'm amazed at how much my tone changes if I'm not playing through one of these. So this is really important for me to get the sound that I want. Um, they're stocked with the Vintage 30 speakers, which is pretty standard, but I think just the, the construction of the, uh, the box is kind of where the staple sound comes from for the Mesa Boogie. Um, and right here, this is just a little holder for my slide. Um, I play slide guitar in one song, so that's where I come back to grab that. This is the uh, this is my effects rack, and this is kind of the the brain of my rig. Um, this piece right here is the RJM Music RG16. Um, RG stands for Rat Gizmo. It basically controls it controls my amp and all of my effects um, through different loops. Um, these are all programmable. These are these program the eight loops uh, for my effects pedals, and then these control the amp functions for my amp. Um, there's obviously not eight eight amp functions for this PV6505 Plus head, but uh, there's a lot of potential for versatility with this thing. This is a really, really cool piece. Um, for pedals, I'm using, I'll just go down the line here. I'm using a uh, Boss DD7 digital delay for my delays, a Boss RV5 reverb pedal for my reverb, um, an Ibanez TS9 is my overdrive pedal, which is huge in getting my tone the way I like it. Uh, without that, my tone is really dried dry and I don't know I don't, I don't like it at all and then right here is the compressor pedal the the boss CS3 and you can't see but in the back I have uh, a noise gate the boss NS2 which is also really important because these amps tend to be pretty noisy and you get a lot of feedback if you don't run a noise gate with it and then I'm powering all of this with the uh, MXR I 
forget what the name of this thing is. This is really cool power system, power supply that it powers this and all my pedals and it's switchable voltage, um, which is really nice for, for doing fly shows all over the world. I, it doesn't matter where I'm playing, if it's you know Thailand or Argentina or Europe or the States, I can always just plug in wherever and just switch it to the correct voltage and power everything without blowing up my pedals. And that that's something that I've worked on a lot at perfecting getting getting a rig that is that I can take anywhere in the world and just plug in and, and use it without using power transformers and stuff like that because that can be a really big pain um, and finally this piece right here is a uh, G major uh, effects processor by TC electronic that I mean it has tons of effects built into it um, I use that for like tremolos and chorus and you know whatever all kinds of stuff mostly on my clean stuff i don't use it uh with my lead stuff very much because it tends to color my tone a little bit but it works well for my cleans um i think that's about it for this piece and we'll talk about my pedal board and how this all gets controlled <laughs> This is my pedal board. Um, this sits downstage, uh, right, right at the front of stage. And there's a lot of stuff on here. This piece right here is the most important piece to my pedal board. This is the uh, RJM Music Mastermind MIDI foot controller. And this here is programmable so that I can control everything that I showed you in my rack with, with the push of a button. For instance, if I hit this button, I now have my delay and reverb pedals on and if I would hit this one here I mean these are all programmable of course but um, for instance this one then switches to a clean channel with my reverb pedal on my noise gate off my overdrive pedal off so basically everything I have in my rack I can program however I want so with one push of a button I can change my tone completely which is really important when I'm playing the show because in some songs, you know, I'll be playing, I'll be playing some riff, and all of a sudden it'll go into like a big clean section with all kinds of effects on it. And instead of sitting there with a big pedal board and trying to hit like five different pedals, I can hit one button and have the tone completely change and be perfect instantly. So that's really important um, for me at this point. And this has tons of different banks. I can, I can basically create a a different bank for every single song and set it up however I want, which is really nice. I, I, I really like this setup a lot. Um, this is my tuner. It's a Boss TU2, very standard. I have had this since 2003. It's never broken on me. I bought a TU3 when they when they came out and I didn't like it as much when I went back to the old one. I, I just, I really like this as a tuner. It's a good solid pedal. This little guy right here is a Ibanez Lo-Fi pedal. I believe it's the LF7. Oh yeah, it says right there. LF7. Um, that is a... It, I, I, I use this for one part in the set. I use it for the intro on Whitewash to kind of give it that more lo-fi like radioed out sound for the intro. Um, and then this is my wah pedal. It's hideous. I know it's really ugly, but it sounds awesome. And I, I'll tell you what I really like about it. It's, it's instantly on. As soon as you start pushing down on the pedal, it's on. So you, with a lot of wah pedals, you have to push them all the way down and hit a button, and then they're on. With this one, I can just walk up to it and, and just immediately start going on it, which, which is really cool. Um, I think the case is pretty ugly, but it works really well and it sounds good. Um, this little guy right here is a custom tap tempo pedal I had made. This is a P for my favorite team, the Phillies, uh, baseball team. And basically, this is just a tap tempo for my delight pedal in my rack. So, you know, all my delays are on beat. Um, and then right here we have a fuel tank chameleon, which is made by T-Rex. It's just the power supply for this pedal board. Um, it's, a really cool, uh, it's a really cool power supply, though. It, it powers, it even powers my wireless, which is right here, a Sennheiser G3 wireless system. And not a lot of pedal powers have the uh, capability of powering something like this, so. Um, and it's the voltage. The voltage is switchable, which is really cool for, like I was saying earlier, traveling around the world. Whatever power you may come in contact with, you're going to. I will have no problems uh, running my rig without a power transformer. Um, and then, as you can see, I have these magnets all over my uh, 
all over my gear, which are just, I mean, these are just my friends and family from home, pictures of me and my girlfriend, my pets. I know it's pretty lame, but I think it's fun. It kind of gives me, like, it's fun for me to look down and, like, see all the familiar faces on my pedal board. And uh, it's just kind of something I did for, for decoration. I'm kind of a nerd about decorating my gear. So that's a little personal touch that I gave that I like. Oh, and up here, you probably can't see. These are two uh, Phillies baseball player stickers. So just another little personal touch. <laughs> so that's about it. I think that's, I think that's my whole rig.